Hi, in this lecture I'll give a brief overview on GI anatomy, particularly in the abdomen. I'll talk about the various organs and the arterial supplies for each of these organs. So first, the anatomy starts with the esophagus. The esophagus goes through the thorax into the abdomen and connects into the stomach. The stomach is comprised of the fundus, cardia, and pylorus. The stomach empties into the duodenum, which is composed of four main regions. The one is the superior, descending, inferior, and then ascending. And then this is continued into the small intestines, into the ileum and the jejunum. I won't go into more detail here for the ileum and jejunum, but they're parts of the small intestine, which eventually empties into the large intestine. The first part of the large intestine is the cecum, which is where the appendix leaves off from. The, the, the large intestine, or the colon, also has four main areas which is the ascending, transverse, which goes across, goes above or in front of the stomach, and then descending, sigmoid, and eventually goes into the rectum. In addition to the, in, in addition to the GI tract, there's a, a couple of accessory organs that are vital for metabolism and digestion. This concludes the liver and the, the gallbladder, which absorbs and keeps some of the pink, some of the bile acids that are secreted from the end, from the liver, and as well as the pancreas, which is here. So, secondly, I like to talk about the exocrine organs which in particular are the liver and the pancreas and the gallbladder which stores bile acids secreted from the liver. All of this is, ex is excreted in the second part of the duodenum in a region which has a sphincter of Odi which controls whether the, the digestive enzymes and bile acids are excreted or not as well as the ampulla of Vader. The ducts are separated such that the two originate from the liver, the left and right hepatic ducts, which combines with the cystic duct, which comes from the gallbladder, combines into the common hepatic duct, which combines with the pancreatic duct, to, to drop everything into the second part of the duodenum. Next, let's talk about arterial supply. The GI system is organized into three main sections, the foregut, the midgut, and the hindgut. The foregut is supplied by the celiac trunk, which is somewhere around here. The celiac trunk is just very sm is a very small continuant continuation that immediately breaks off into three major parts. First, the left gastric artery. Second, the splenic artery. And thirdly, the common hepatic artery. The left gastric artery also branches off into the esophageal artery. The splenic artery branches goes to the spleen but also has a branch that goes that is the left gastroepiploic artery and the hepatic artery branches off upwards into right next to into the hepatic artery the cystic artery which goes to the gallbladder as well as the gastroduodenal artery that splits into the right into the um, right gastroepiploic artery which anastomose 
anastomosis, anastomos with the left. There's also, in addition, there's also the right gastric artery, which also circles around and it goes to the inferior surface of the stomach and also anastomos with the left gastric artery. The foregut is composed of the esophagus, stomach, half, the first half of the duodenum, the liver, pancreas, spleen, and gallbladder, which is approximately the organs that are, are being perfused by the celiac trunk. The midgut is supplied by the superior mesenteric artery, which arises from about here, which also arises directly from the aorta and supplies the second half of the duodenum, the jejunum, the ileum, and as well as the ascending colon and two-thirds of the transverse colon. So if I had to color it, let's say in yellow, this entire region, including the appendix, will be perfused by the midgut. Whereas the, f the foregut was the esophagus, stomach, pancreas, first part of the duodenum, liver, gallbladder, and spleen. The parts in red. And third, but definitely not least, is the hindgut. The hindgut is supplied by the inferior mesenteric artery and comprises of the last third of the transverse colon, the descending colon, sigmoid colon, as, as well as the rectum. So the, the GI tract is one of the, has a unique system in which the veins, there are two capillary systems that the blood supply goes through before it goes back into the heart. In the rest of your body, it's typically, it goes from the heart into a system of capillaries which perfuses tissues, which has the highest resistance, and then back into areas of low resistance that goes back into the heart. For the gastrointestinal system, there's actually two systems where all the blood still starts from the heart. There's a capillary bed, which is, um, I guess, like perfuses the intestines, which absorbs a lot of the nutrients, but also must go through the liver, another set of capillaries, to clean, detox, and a lot of various other functions before it goes back into the heart. This is called the hepatic portal system in which the veins, the veins from the GI system go directly into the liver which go back into systemic circulation through the IVC or the inferior vena cava. So the, the veins of the GI system in particular are the superior mesenteric vein inferior mesenteric vein and the splenic vein. So in green there are two main systems. Everything goes into the liver. I'll color in green here. But it goes in through t three main systems the superior mesenteric artery or vein here, the splenic vein here, and the inferior mesenteric vein, which branches into the splenic vein, which all goes directly into the liver, and eventually 
goes out of the liver so through the liver hepatic vein and into the IVC and goes back into the heart. So this generally works really well, as in most of the blood goes through is filtered. But if there's some damage with the liver, in particular an example would be cirrhosis, where the liver can't or there's higher pressures in the hepatic portal system, or the liver can't handle its blood. There's also there's something called the um, portal cable system, in which if the liver, if all the blood can't go through the liver, there's still a couple of other ways that the blood can get back into systemic or organization. There are three main anastomoses, or four main anastomoses. First, the esophageal the esophageal vein it can is is a point of anastomosis with the splenic vein or with the splenic vein so it allows this so it can directly pass into systemic circulation the rectal veins allows another is another point of anastomosis which can allow back into systemic circulation for the two, for the colon, the ascending and descending colon, there are the, there are for the ascending and descending colon, there are the, there are the lumbar veins, which are in the back, of, in your back, which also allows anastomoses back into the systemic circulation, and there's also uh, umbilical veins, which goes into sy systemic circulation and branches off the, which can take blood from the superior mesenteric. This is actually a clinical sign, and with cirrhosis, you can have cap capitulae medulla, in which you see very prominent veins from the umbilical cord down, which is a sign of ascites, uh, fluid, fluid in the abdominal region, as well as cirrhosis.